Hi everyone, I'm Angela Zhu. I'm currently a junior from Jericho, Long Island, New York, and I'm gonna be the representative for Climate Crew 2020. So before this presentation, I first just want to acknowledge the ancestral territory of the Matinecock Nation who inhabited this land long before Jericho was built. I also obviously wanna shout out my other partners, Kevin, Lily, and Nayanne, who, and Leanne, who actually made the little stickers to our presentation. And although I definitely would have loved to keep the Clean Canteen gift cards for myself, I would not have gotten here without them. So we are four high schoolers who connected over a love for science, stuffed animals, as you can see in the image, and also the environment. From PGC, we shared so many late, late night memories, and it has seriously changed so much about our lives, like not just in terms of sleep schedules, but also in our relationship with nature. So here's my personal story. To sum it up, when I was a child, I ate dirt once, and I really felt much more internally connected to nature. And here we are. Okay, that was a joke, I swear. <laughs> Anyways, besides consuming copious amounts of soil, I've always been really just raised to value the importance of nature. And as a kid, my family and I always went on family outings, nearby gardens, like the old Westbury Botanical Garden, for example. And even here, you can see me chasing all of those chickens. But as time passed, like just because of online, ne online learning and my inability to walk upstairs without getting out of breath, we really just didn't get the chance to explore our surroundings anymore. And it's like, wow, I really peaked at four years old, didn't I? So even though I lived in Long Island for all of my life, like it feels like the older I've gotten, the more distant I grew from my environment. And I'm sure a lot of other people actually feel the same way. And school like just really pushed us away from nature in more ways than one. Like when we heard about global warming, pollution and other environmental issues, we obviously wanted these problems to stop, but we were never given the resources to do anything about them. And like from interactions we've had with like our friends and family, it's very clear that a lot of people have similar experiences. And I mean, as you can see from this chart, there's literally millions of people today who don't think climate change is like as big of an issue just because it doesn't think the impact, just because they don't think it impacts them as personally. But PGC just finally gave us an outlet to incite real change in our community and reconnect with the nature that we missed for so long. Like when we signed up for PGC, we were honestly in it for the gift cards, let's be real. But when we like started working on the first few challenges, even on just the first day, we realized it was so much more than that, like so much more than just a competition. And PGC taught us so many things, like how most corporations couldn't even care less about the BIPOC and low-income communities that often face the worst of climate change. And every day, every single day in October, we pushed ourselves to do something new and inspiring. Like we wrote our own songs, we created vlogs, cooking recipes, DIY skincare products, and even ASMR, which was interesting. <laughs> For us, um, especially day 11 adventure, also stood out as like one of the most impactful days, like the turning point days. When my, my family and I went with our puppy Leon, shout out, to one of our local trails. And not sure if it was because we finally got vitamin D or if, or if it was because we like got to experience the natural beauty of the location, but we completely fell in love with it. And we just really wanted to share that awesomeness with other people. And that's exactly what our project at Eco is about. So basically, it's a nonprofit organization that teaches users about local plants and animals and how human actions are threatening them. And also just like the simple things that we can do to help. We also want to highlight the voices of, um, hit, uh, voices of indigenous populations and marginalized communities who are often the most vulnerable to climate change. To do this, we're gonna be putting up signs near the entrances of local parks and trails that have QR codes, which are linked to our app and website. And the app and website will feature interactive guides and infographics about history and about nature. And the best part of EDECO is that it can first off work under COVID-19 guidelines and also work in any part of the world which is exactly why we hope to expand our organization nationally or even internationally. To help us reach this goal, we're gonna be recruiting students from across the community and hopefully across the world, across the country as well as volunteers and they will be creating and uh, the guides for Eco and also getting the chance to explore their um, local trails. 
and to ensure that our info is accurate. Our history and science research teacher um, both agreed to help us compile and like um, assess the information for our guides. And this way, Edigo won't just be like a basement project done by Climate Crew 2020 alone, but it's like a collaborative effort that advocates for environmental awareness everywhere. And we've also reached out to our district legislator, Josh Lafazan, for approval to place signs in the location that we want to cover. So right now, we've actually already started our CAP project by creating a website, uh, web page for our first location, which we decided to be Jones Beach. And you can see some examples on the screen over here. Um, this includes audio and visual guides that explain like the unique aspects of the beach while leading users through a designated path. And for a general timeline, by the end of the year, our website will be up and running and also include um, as many locations as possible. And that's of course, depending on how many friends we can bribe with Dr. Broner. So um, in 2021, we hope and on, we hope to expand our community and also the number of guides on our website. So we also did a cost breakdown for Edico, and most of the costs actually come from nonprofit filing and the web and app development, as you can see here. And we plan to raise this money through fundraising and also donations from our local community. And um, Edico is going to be a self-sustaining program as well. So basically, our plan is to fill up this map of Long Island with all sorts of different locations and create guides for each of them and also highlight the indigenous populations that lived here before. And this applies to um, any location that we will cover in the future. But we do definitely know that we are going to face some challenges along the way. Like first off, spreading the word and recruiting volunteers will definitely be difficult. And we also need to learn how to do the coding and the QR codes for our website and app. But um, two of our members, Lily and Kevin, they already have a lot of programming, programming experience. So we're just going to leave that work to them. <laughs> and not to mention, we've already teamed up with our school's environmental club, and we hope that we can recruit volunteers for that. And we'll definitely promote Edigo on our social media. So overall, we just really think that our project will encourage people to honor their local nature, their history, and also the people who came before them in their community. And Edigo will continue to spread like um, much awareness about the current issues that local ecosystems and also the BIPOC communities face due to like pollution and habitat destruction. And some of the parks that we're creating guides for, for example, like Jones Beach, they have millions of visitors each year. And even if only a small percentage of them were to like um, scan our QR codes, we think that we would still be able to reach a lot of people with our message. And not only that, we want to inspire people to take part of the climate justice movement and also remind them how to become children again, back when we were all in love with nature and we would do everything we could to keep it healthy. So through Ed Eco and together with the PGC team and our amazing mentors and the other finalists, we hope to get our message of Ed Eco to communities across the world and let them connect with their beautiful local history and natural reserves. Thank you.